Okay, welcome back to the shop. Um, I decided to try a little different technique uh, on making the mold uh, for this uh, window plug. Normally we uh, mix up the ultra cow in a big goopy mess and smear it on. But I thought uh, since these parts are relatively small that uh, I would mix up the standard ratio of 38 to 1 on the uh, 38 parts of uh, of water to uh, 100 parts of Ultracal and uh, get the nice slurry mix and then pour it. I can see I've built a little box around here, kind of like when you make a silica mold. So I thought I'd see if it, it, would, it would work out for Ultracal on something this size. So we've got our, our water and our Ultracal and we'll uh, get started mixing this up. Bubbly mess here. Hopefully, I don't overflow the container. That wouldn't be too good. I just I had to guess, kind of. I was trying to figure out calculation-wise exactly what kind of volume I needed to fill this thing up, but it uh, got so complicated my brain started burning, so I decided to just wing it and mix up a certain amount, which I'm sure is way too much, and uh, and we'll uh, go from there and uh, see what happens. Okay, 38 to 1 mixture. At that uh, mix rate, this stuff is really pretty liquid. Yeah, we'll get our little. Gotta be careful, I'll get it all over me like Don did. creates a lot of air bubbles. Hopefully though with this mixture as thin as it is, those air bubbles will come out of there with no problem. So uh, we'll just kind of sit there and vibrate this for a little bit here. See how uh, you can see this or not here. How fluid that is. A little different than when we mix it up in a goop and uh, smear it around. You ain't gotta be careful here. I'll actually create air bubbles cavitate this stuff. Okay. This, uh, see if the bubbles come to the surface here. They come up a lot easier on this because it's so thin. 
hopefully that'll mean I have uh, less chance of getting any bubbles into the mold. And a few big ones in there, as soon as they pop, I think we'll pour this. helping hand. Okay. Now, let's see if we can pour this right in here. Oh yeah, I only made it about six times more than I need. Nice thing about this is it flows so e evenly. Well, theoretically. I may have a problem I forgot. Man, this thing is leaking out all over the place. Oh, problem! Yep. My fence didn't stay down like it's supposed to. on these corners. You can see I'm still getting a big leak over here. So that's something we're going to have to address the next time. I don't know why it's leaking so bad. Because it's still seeping out of there. That's not good. Not good at all. Actually, we only maybe 25% too much. <laughs> Maybe it's a good thing we did. But, uh, yeah, I had put I put tape around the sides of this box uh, to seal the seam in, but for some reason I'm getting a heck of a leak over here. Slow down a little bit there. And keep pouring some more ultra cal on there as long as it's uh, is thin enough to pour. Yeah, I think we'll be all right. We'll be all right, even if it pours down. Even if I get a little sag on the outside, it won't make any difference as long as there's no exposure to the uh, the mold underneath. I'll still have a cavity that I can fill, but uh, yeah, it's got a very slow leak. I'm going to have to work on a better seal. At least that's the only place it's leaking. A little leak here, but nothing significant. I'll have to do a better job of taping when I do the next one if this works out. I don't see any reason that it won't. Yeah, it's been about uh, 
about five minutes. You know, with this stuff being this thin, you can see it's starting to thicken up just a little bit, so my leakage seems to pretty much have slowed down to I think zero. Yeah. Okay. That's looking good. We'll uh, we'll let that set up, and then uh, we'll uh, see how it comes out.